I don't think anyone is, was expecting that movie. Please put your hands together and help me in welcoming Nelson Coates. Hello. How are you? Good to see you. Have a seat. Nelson is a bundle of energy, as you will find. <laughs> so please participate and encourage him all you want, because actually, you don't really need any encouragement. <laughs> um, you're the winner of the 2019 Art Director Guild Award for production design of a contemporary film. You've been doing this for ages, but congratulations on Thank winning. Thank you very much. Very, very excited. The other big bit of news that we have for you is that Ken Hua Tan, Rachel Chu's mother, is in uh, the room. If we can have the lights up, have her stand up, take a bow. Where are you? Thank you for joining us. Um, set the stage for us with Crazy Rich Asians. It's, I know, one of the many, many beautiful movies that you've produced. Um, and it does take a village uh, to produce anything on television, let alone the movies. Um, where do you start, and how does production design really fit into the, you know, the spectacular movie making, storytelling of the movie business? <laughs> where do you fit in? Well, first, uh, basically, as a production designer, I'm in charge of the concepts and execution of the sets, props costumes, hair, makeup, uh, visual effects, basically all the narrative storytelling aspects of a movie. So you're one of the first people hired and you've got to create a very tight relationship with the director because you're basically taking something from whole cloth, you know, just ether and making it into uh, an actual physical you know, product that hopefully will have resonance in telling a story with lots of depth. This is an example of storytelling to another level. Um, when I was watching the movie, I was absolutely blown away with not just the acting, and they, it had some of my favorite actors in it, as probably yours as well, but just these scenes of the story of how you put it together and add it to the script making itself and the script writing itself. Tell, run, just run us through the wedding scene here, because these are the before and after pictures. Basically, you're trying to figure out how to work within a box of, of money and time and manpower and to take that and exponentially bring it to a whole nother level. Uh, literally, you're adding detail and detail and detail that maybe is not in the page. In fact, most of the time is not in the page. So in a case of using a um, book and turning that into a movie, you're looking at the, uh, the little nuggets of details that might be in the pages, and then you're jumping forward. So. For the wedding, this particular scene, we were looking for a, a traditional church but wanted to take it on its ear. As we were scouting early in the process, uh, the director and I uh, were in uh, the Bangkok area and we saw this hotel that had an atrium with water in it. He looked at me and he goes, you know what, I want some water in the wedding. I don't even know what that means, but let's figure that out. And I said, okay, great. And then we saw some traveler's palms in another place and he goes, those would be really cool. I don't know how we use them, but that'd be great. I was like, okay, great. So you start thinking of ideas and putting things together, not even knowing where they're going to, to be. But you're putting together a big mood wall. You're, literally, I had probably 100 feet of wall with research pictures, with fabrics, with textures, with, with plants, with y y anything that, that would make sense. And you're moving it around, seeing where it would fit the best. And in this case, John came to me, John Chu, the director, and said, uh, it would be really cool if they're sitting in a meadow. And I was like, Okay, well, that's going to be kind of weird because ladies in high heels and dresses are going to have a hard time sitting on a hill or a meadow, but I'll take that and figure out something. So we uh, started developing what it could possibly be, and not only do you worry about how something looks as a production designer, you also have to worry about how you film it. How does the camera get from place to place? How do you get in and out of spaces and not crush? So if you're doing grasses, where does the camera go? How do the people not ruin, and how does the grass stay you know, alive? So yeah. obviously everything is alive. There's four, there are four semi-trucks full of greenery into this space, as well as the scenery. You know, I said, John, let's, most Chinese gardens have uh, a, a focal point, so we'll do a, a moon gate down at the end. And as we were looking around Singapore, the slogan, let's make Singapore our garden, just you know, filled my heart. I thought, oh, this is great. Let's make the wedding our garden so that people are so surprised when they enter the church. Yeah. 
So in this case, we found grasses in China that were uh, a meter tall. We, we invented a, a grid section for the floor. And then we were able to pull the grass in or pull the grass out, benches in, cameras could move all over the place. And then, of course, the crazy water. The crazy water was probably my favorite, favorite scene. But talk us through the steps, because Aquafina just really highlighted the amount of work that went into those steps. Talk us to, through well, how that happened and the time frame that happened then. Ironically, you have a certain number of days. We shot in two countries, eight cities, and only 43 days of filming. Only about nine and a half days were here in Singapore. So the majority of the movie was in Kuala Lumpur with a little bit in Penang and Langkawi. The house is actually six different things. The interior of a house, uh, a old governor's mansion in KL. The exterior was the guest house, another structure on the same property. The conservatory out on the lawn was built in 16 days. Uh, and then the gates were the only part that were here in, in Singapore. And then we did a you know, flyover shot that's entirely visual effects. And it makes it all come together seamlessly with a vestibule, et cetera, so that you think you're in one particular house, and, and really, when we found the interior portion of this, there were bats, there was a feral dog population, there were collapsed floors that we had to reinforce with steel. And you were gilding all the way and up the film. Literally, literally, I was gilding the handrails the night before we were filming this. And it was, you know, 100 degrees, et cetera. And you, you're trying to make the story look rich and amazing, whether you're finding something and transforming it or building it from scratch completely. All right. This is not the only movie that you have done. There are some amazing ones that you have made. At, talk, talk us through the mind of Nelson Coates. You get a movie, sometimes back-to-back. -back. I know in this case you're going to be doing back-to-backs next year, hopefully. Hopefully. Um, how do you create visual history and the backstory to a narrative, something like someone as, a, as much of a living icon as Ruth Bader Ginsburg, for example? How did you do that? Basically, you have to do a deep dive into someone's culture, into the time period. Um, doing a period movie is like going to a different country. So I really approach it pretty much the same way. You, you're seeing technologies that are a little different, you know, things that you haven't lived with, but someone lived with someplace. So to help everyone, not only the cast, but all the crew understand those details, I do these huge walls, you know, as high tech as you can be, you also need that low tech element because uh, as an old uh, designer said to me in the past, he goes, you know, the art is in the lead. And I said, no, the art's in your head. You know, you get to choose the materials and the, the resources and the, the equipment and the software, et cetera, that best serve the storytelling process. So in doing the Ruth Bader Ginsburg uh, film, we had to figure out a place that we could actually film it that would have uh, the least amount of 2017 to get rid of in order to add the levels of the 1950s and 1970s of, uh, of uh, the Harvard area in Cambridge and also New York. So literally these street scenes, uh, you know, we had like 50 period cars and you're uh, only having access in Montreal to some of these places uh, at six o'clock at night and you're filming the next morning. So we're swamping the streets with scenery and signage and doing all sorts of things where in the past I would have had to build old uh, neon signs and things. You're, you're able to do a lot of stuff with LEDs and with a lot of graphics that are actually uh, introduced into the printing process. So signs and things that go off into the distance really are printed on styrene or uh, on, on thin uh, dye bond materials and things that, you know, normally in the past we've had to build heavy uh, pieces that would take longer to install. So you have to just move faster to get yeah. something like this accomplished. I mean, tell us a little bit more about working with your teams because to get that vision to fruition in the time frames that you're talking about, and we'll get down to budgets afterwards, <laughs> um, you really need to be a team player. You need to bring teams together to have the same dream, the same design in their heads. How do you do it? Basically, one of the challenges is I, I work all over the world and People vet you like crazy based on your past work and meetings and that sort of thing to deliver a product at a certain level. And yet you're going to a different environment with crew uh, that you're having to assemble that may have very different levels of completion or skill sets. And you have to actually embrace the challenges 
Because if you come into, let's say, Malaysia or Singapore and go, they don't do it my way, or you know, that sort of thing, you're actually going to be uh, you know, counter uh, or antithetical to the, the product that you're trying to create. You actually have to kind of be a cheerleader and get everybody vested in the design and the direction you're going. But you also have to have strong decisions. And even if you don't have a lot of money, you have to make those decisions very quickly. And you have to be very confident in those decisions and how they fit into the entire narrative of the story. I mean, basically, you're taking elements that people have assigned history and emotion uh, from their past. And you may not have that same sort of uh, uh, imagery or that same history invested in an article or a piece of fabric. But you're trying to use every element to tell the story uh, so that the combination is much stronger than the sum of the parts. Well, he, Nelson told me a really interesting story yesterday, uh, or was it the day before, jet lag, forgive me, um, where I think all bosses should do this. He has a wonderful team of different nationalities working on Crazy Rich Asians to these crazy deadlines. Uh, when there's rain, things have to be filmed. And explain to us what you did and give a hint to every team leader out there of what they need to do. And I'm talking about massages being involved. So, oh. <laughs> well, first off, at the, the, the start of every week, uh, you know, I, I would have a full team meeting and, and I got them laughing every time by saying, obviously I'm not from this region. And they all would laugh. And I said, if you see something that is culturally incorrect, if, something, if you see something that's out of place, it's your responsibility as part of this team to help us all get those elements together. And then people felt invested. You put people in leadership positions that may not have ever been in leadership positions, not in a place where they're going to fail, but some place that they're actually going to uh, contribute. And, take ownership in what you're, you're doing. When we were making the conservatory out on the lawn, we uh, were literally building it in 16 days and eight were entire rain. And so we were way behind the day before and my Thai painters were just physically exhausted by painting and having their arms up in the air and all this. And about uh, six o'clock at night, they were all still panicked. Uh, we had about 30 people working on it at that point. And uh, uh, I came in, and I was panicked, but I didn't let them know I was panicked. And so it was like, okay, we're going to do this and this and this. And I left, and they said, if he's not panicked, maybe we actually can get this done. And so they all jumped into a, 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 a hyperspeed. And then by 11 o'clock at night, when I came back to check again, they were all exhausted and sitting. And I knew there wasn't really much I could say to help continue them through the night. So uh, I went over to one of the guys and, and just did his shoulders really quickly, and he just started going, oh, and all the, the rest of the team started laughing, and so then I went around and I gave quick little shoulder massages to everybody, um, which culturally that had not ever happened, a boss <laughs> doing that, and, and I didn't, wasn't thinking about that. I was kind of you know, thinking, oh my gosh, if I can get them more relaxed, they're gonna do more work and we're gonna get finished. But uh, uh, in essence, uh, by doing that, it, it was such an encouragement. They all talked about that, the rest of the show amongst themselves, that, that a boss would care that much, you know, that we, you would come in and try to get, get them through the night. But physical labor aside, the one other element that I know surprised many of my family members was a scene that they all oohed and aahed with. But turns out it's all about innovation and design in this particular scene. Let's pull it up. Pretty much my husband's when I said, that's not really real. How did <laughs> Basically, that we got to the end of the movie and realized uh, that we really needed to have something that showed the massive scale of this property. And as the real portions of houses were actually in the jungle in KL, uh, we went to the studio and said, you know, we're, we're doing well budget-wise, we need to actually create a visual effects shot. So every element of that helicopter shot you see just then is literally created in the computer. Uh, there's no lake, there's no fountain, there's literally, there's nothing there. Uh, so we, they took still shots that I had taken of all the sets, and then we, we mapped those in the computer. We uh, mapped all the plants, the flora and fauna that were around, uh, and all our working drawings for the conservatory out on the lawn. Literally through Google Maps, we were measuring the distance, because this, we're long gone from being in Malaysia, and so we're doing all the, the distances and the metrics there, and basically that is wholesale created in the computer. It really does define how much the business has changed since you started, because your start was interesting in the, in the industry. Um, Problem Child was one of my favorite movies um, growing up. 
I epitomized it according to my mother. Um, but when you look at how the business has changed itself, what do you think has been the good, the bad, the ugly? Well, the techniques, the uh, elements of you know material changes, the fact that I can print on anything. I can print on plywood or bubble wrap. Uh, you know, anything I can dream of uh, basically can come to fruition, whether physically or with a combination of physical and virtual, or maybe entirely virtual. Uh, some of the challenges, though, uh, we're in a more litigious society than we've ever been before, and so people want to uh, get a piece of the action if they can. You, the, the amount of legal and clearance uh, things for names, for anything that's copyrighted material that might be on a poster or something in the background, all of a sudden has fallen onto the design team. You know, we're the ones who actually have to get the legal clearances and create uh, either fake things if we can't uh, get things really clear to use. So uh, it's almost like I'm running a legal department as well as an engineering department, as well as a design department, as well as a scheduling and traffic management, as well as budgeting. I mean, it, it just kind of ends up wrapping everything into also a tiny budget. Yes. Because how involved are studio bosses in decision making like Pacific Asian Airline or ASEAN Airline? Because at some point, you didn't have an airline for that fancy scene in the first class cabin. No, we actually didn't. Uh, we had tried to, uh, in this case, uh, you know, get a local airline. And uh, uh, no one knew what the movie was actually going to be. And so before something is a real product, you're trying to invest people in the direction that you're going and that you're, you're not going to make fun of the, uh, an entire culture like maybe Hollywood has done in the past and that sort of thing. So if someone doesn't play and you still have those scenes, you still have to figure out a way to accomplish them. And then I had to legally come up with a name that the director liked that we could get cleared through our legal department. And in this case, uh, uh, we got Pacific Asian. And this particular set, the components were, were built over the course of two weeks. Uh, there's uh, uh, all the wall pieces are cast and things, but literally that assembled in 24 hours and finished about 30 minutes before. The um, first class portion uh, uh, had graphics that showed up from the uh, printer and none of the color matched. And that was at nine o'clock at night and it played at six the next morning. And so they were having to run all night doing sheets and we were applying graphics. And as the director came in with the cast, we were finishing putting the carpet down on this. So you actually have to remain calm because pretty much the, uh, uh, the entire process usually can be incredibly chaotic. How do you address the challenges in the very fact that you have to create all of this, you have to deal with the legalities, you have innovation to help you in the design process, but perhaps the studios themselves, are, are they asking too much of production designers now in the movie business? Well, basically you're trying to accomplish stuff that they, you know, that early on a bean counter someplace is putting a, a, a kind of an imaginary budget together based on things that are similar size or similar complexity, but that may not be exactly the budget you need for what you're actually trying to accomplish. So you have to present ideas and present things to studios so that they, uh, the decision makers can see why you're having to do something and get them invested in the direction you're going. How do you do that? You have to be incredibly communicative. So I use anything and everything, whether it's models, whether it's virtual models uh, like SketchUp or AutoCAD, or uh, just fabric samples and photos and things. And you do video conferencing you know, if, if uh, they need more explanation. And you're, you're trying to get them invested in your dream. And of course, that's the director's dream that you're trying to support. Well, we don't have a lot of time, so I can take one question from the audience, because I think it's, I know I have a 100 questions left. Anyone have a question for Nelson in the wonderful movie that he put together for Singapore? If not, it's over here. What? Perfect. Go on. So tell us about Singapore Airlines. Why wouldn't they want this amazing opportunity to, to be in your that, movie? Okay, come on. Oh my gosh, I was trying to like, you know, whatever. You know. Uh, Mainly, mainly uh, when people don't know what something is, you know, uh, you, you have a challenge getting involved. And, uh, you know, they thought maybe, I, I think they may have thought that we were going to make fun or do or what. Uh, now, of course, everybody wants to be involved in the sequels uh, because they see what it is. 
Uh, but, you know, it's really challenging to do the abstract and get people on board, you know. Uh, it took months to get Marina Bay Sands, and, and believe me, Gardens by the Bay, where we did the reception, was actually where uh, they were getting ready to do their five-year anniversary celebration right in the middle of the super trees, and I come in with the producers and say, I want to build a set here, right where you're going to do your event. So you have to get them invested as well. Well, I know we have to wrap up, but I can't help but finish on one of my favorite scenes in the movie. So let's pull that up for you. 10 second answer, Nelson. What's next in the magic bag and when are you gonna recreate that pure magic? The next thing uh, John Chu and I are starting in New York is an adaptation of Lin-Manuel Miranda's uh, Tony Award winning musical In the Heights uh, for Warner Brothers. And so we'll be singing and dancing in the streets of New York all summer. And then uh, hopefully the script's coming along for uh, China Rich Girlfriend and Rich People Problems and we hope to maybe be shooting those in 2020, so. Back-to-back -back movies to look so. forward to. Nelson, thank you so thank very you so much, much for your time. Nice to meet you, thank you.